Have ye not read that he that hath made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. From Which years ago, are? let God arise, so, his enemies be scattered. Wow. Do you know Psalm that? Psalm 67. Do you go know on, that? Give, us a, give us a blast of it, Joe. Go on, go on. Let God <coughs> arise, his enemies be scattered. Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Oh, let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Come on, come on. Save me, O oh God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep fire where there is no standing. I have come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my pride. Just as a reminder, everybody, we are giving an offering to the Lancy's Depot Orphanage um, on this Sunday morning. And uh, I think Phil's going to be uh, bringing a report as well on where, where we're all at with that. So um, you, if you're bringing, doing a check, you need to make the check out to the church and all the money goes to Lancy's Depot Orphanage. We don't keep any of it at all. Right, so we're parked on the side here at the moment and Chris is just helping us out a bit with the... Uh, there's a few things that need doing on this van. Chris has got exactly the same van as this. In fact, it was Chris that recommended the van. So the lights the, the headlights have gone really dim, um, dangerously just, dim. I've just done that because it was coming down here. Ah. So you, you'd see that down yeah, there, and yeah. and that coming over that yeah. is going to ruin the rubber. Of course it is. Yeah. So so now that's right now. Thank you, Chris. There's a bit of play in them. Yeah. That's, that's okay. It's... Well, it's thirty years old, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's great, mate. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's a, she's a, a real good old bus, this one. This is the farm here. It's actually a fantastic view. We've had some good barbecues on there in summer. That all needs doing. That's got to be replaced now. But it's lasted 11 years, believe it or not. And it, these, were, these were scaffold planks from the fourth row bridge. Scaffold planks when they do all the painting of the bridge. This is where they were from, so they'd already had a hard life. Hi everybody, well it's uh, it's prayer week and we had a fabulous start to it last night, really really enjoyed it. Um, I would say the highlight for me, it was beautiful, people reading a psalm and then people praying in between the psalms, the whole thing was beautiful. Mandy just playing music in the background. The highlight for me was um, Diane reading Psalm 22. I don't think I've ever... I don't know. There was something going on when she read Psalm 22 with Mandy playing just very gently in the background. It felt like you were reading the, the heart of Jesus at the cross. It was very, very, very special. It's, I won't forget that. But uh, it's been very precious and um, I'm just going to do this video while we've got, while there's nobody else in. So we are looking at the study of Revelation chapter 6. I know this study is not easy. It's, it's not something that people like to look at really. But it's important. If it wasn't important, Jesus wouldn't warn us as much as he does about these events. And he really does warn us. Now, to kick us off in Revelation chapter 6, we need to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 15 is the best starting point, really. Because what is to come, the Bible tells us, what's to come in the future has already been. There are patterns there are patterns in history. That's why Jesus warned that there will be many false prophets, many that come in my name, many 
Christ will come and will deceive many. And the patterns are always very, very similar. Now, that doesn't mean that the, the very last days are going to be exactly the same, but the pattern, the, the, the way that it leads up to that is normally the same. It's a bit like a serial killer that likes to leave a signature. They, they get a kick out of it somehow, of leaving a signature. Every time they, they kill somebody, they leave something behind just to let you know that it was them. And it's like that through history. So what um, we need to do first is to try and see how the scriptures parallel one another. So if somebody would like to read Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 to 11. If somebody else would like to read Matthew 24, 1 to 22. Now if you notice in this we're leaving out the very last part. We're leaving that out because the patterns that we see through history obviously don't include the return of Christ. So we're leaving out that last part. We're just looking at the patterns that lead up to it. Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 to 11. Matthew 24, 1 to 22. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 4. Um, and Luke 21, 8 to 20. There are more, but I think that will do. When you put them together, and there's many more, you're going to start to see patterns. Daniel 9, 27 would be another one. You're going to start to see patterns, signatures. And all the way through history, there has been patterns and signatures of the killer. Remember what Jesus said about the devil. He says he was a murderer from the beginning and he leaves his little signature on things. Now I know Maureen did a, um, a really good study on the Nazis of Germany and how close they got to fulfilling quite a lot of Matthew 24. And it's, it was a brilliant study. So I know with Maureen's group, they'll probably be, be looking at that, and it is incredible. There's something now on, on uh, I think the actual site, yeah, so the, the, the website is called the Ge uh, Genocide Watch, and this is just a little part, and it's called the 10 Stages of Genocide. The reason why we're looking at this is because this is always, it's very much always the same pattern. So this is how it goes. Number one, classification. Number two, symbolization, i.e. the star, the Jewish star or whatever. Number three is discrimination. Number four is dehumanization. Number five is organization. Number six is polarization. Number seven is preparation. Number eight is persecution. Number nine is extermination. And number 10 is Denial. Denial that it ever happened. We've seen this pattern so many times in history. I remember when we were, we were doing an, a mission outreach in Budapest. At the time of um, the, 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 the war that was going on in Bosnia and the genocide. And hundreds and hundreds of young people were getting out of there, uh, escaping what was going on. And... We tried to get them to talk about what was going on and they absolutely didn't want to talk about it. But so many times these things end up in denial. It never happened. You go and look um, at Birkenau and where the main gas chambers are. The SS blew them up before they went. It always finishes in denial. Amazing. So that's the first discussion point when you looked at these scriptures and you'll you will see patterns because the bible interprets the bible that's the way it works you'll see the same pattern think about history um and hopefully different people will think about different parts in history and think about how many times we have seen this same predictable pattern a serial killer likes to put his signature where the crime is. And it's the same in history. You see the same signature again and again and again. So I know it's a bit of a um, 
disturbing thing to look at, but we're looking at Revelation chapter 6 at the moment. Have a look at patterns in history and remember what Ecclesiastes 3.15 says, that which is to come has already been. Psalm 74. O oh God, why have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation which you have purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance which you have redeemed, this Mount Zion where you have dwelt. Lift up your feet to the perpetual desolations. The enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. Your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees. And now they break down its carved work all at once with axes and hammers. They have set fire to your sanctuary. They have defiled the dwelling place of your name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them all together. They have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land. We do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, nor is there any amongst us who knows how long. O oh God, how long will the adversary reproach? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you withdraw your hand, even your right hand? Take it out of your bosom and destroy them. For God is my king from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea, serpents in the waters. You broke the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gave him as food to the people inhabiting the wilderness. You broke open the fountain and the flood. You dried up mighty rivers. The day is yours, the night also is yours. You have prepared the light and the sun. You have set all the borders of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that a foolish people has blasphemed your name. O oh, do not deliver the life of your turtle dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. O oh, do not let the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O oh God, plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches you daily. Do not forget the voice of your enemies. The tumult of those who rise up against you increases continually. Psalm 75 We give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks. For your wondrous works declare that your name is near. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly. Selah. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully, and to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high, do not speak with a stiff neck. For exultation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Good morning, folks. I'm just up at Chatley Whitfield Colliery. Uh, there's the old chimney there and the huge wheel that goes down to the mines. The church is just over there. It's actually quite a cold morning this morning. So we had a great start to the uh, prayer week. Real good attendance and uh, uh, a real sense of the presence of God as well. Um, 
please pray for Kevin. Um, such a lovely man of God, such a, a, a fruit bearing man of God. And um, I just like us to keep him in prayer. He's just received uh, news of um, stage five cancer and uh, he hasn't had all the tests done yet. So he's got all that to come. He's a very strong man. In fact, funnily enough, and this is total coincidence really, but this is where Kevin comes pretty much every day, walks up these steps, back down, sometimes does it twice. I know he eats very well. He's eaten well for a good few years now, looks after his body. And uh, please pray for Lynn as well, and Linda, because things like that hit you hard. But anyway, Luke, you take, we take one day at a time. We seek the kingdom of God. I know, ex I know that exactly that's what Kevin's thinking. Um, and we get, we get through this together, believing that our God is good. And also, there's a lovely lady. She listens in online. Her name's Liz. She was diagnosed with cancer not that long ago. Again, going through similar emotions, similar things. Uh, and a husband can. We need to keep these people in prayer. We are doing this week so many things to pray about, but you know, we have to think about the individuals as well. And uh, see, look at this, Kev. I'm coming up here. I don't know how you do it. Up and down here every day twice. Yeah, so. Funnily enough, I was speaking to Mia last night in Canada and she's studying the book of Job and she's on fire studying the book of Job and uh, when you think what God allowed Job to go through, it's unbelievable. Uh, but you have to look at the end. You always have to look at the end and realise what God was doing. We don't always see the bigger picture, friends, but the end for the saints is glorious. So let's turn our attention back to Revelation 6 for the group study. Them are the days, eh? Look at that place. The industry that was here in Stoke-on-Trent. And all these mines join up underneath the earth. Miles apart, miles and miles and miles of mines in every direction. Anyway, Revelation 6. So we'll see this as we get further into the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 6 is a kind of a wide angle look at the events leading directly up to the rapture of the church. And what happens later on in Revelation is that we get chapters that actually parallel and zoom in with a much narrower field of view, zoom in at certain aspects of things that happened during that time. So, the way I like to think of it is it's, it's a bit like the Gospels. We're literally just reading through the Gospels in the prayer time now. And you've got four Gospels. And of course, the four Gospels describe exactly the same story. They describe exactly what Jesus did, but from three, four different camera angles. You've got the Synoptic Gospels and then John. Well, it, the Scriptures do this. Um, Kings and Chronicles do it. And Revelation does it as well. And when once you kind of realise that, it begins to make a bit more sense that so, some of these chapters are paralleled up together. So there's chapters further on in Revelation that kind of fit into Revelation 6. Now, when I do Revelation 6, I normally continue straight into Revelation 7 because to finish on Revelation 6 can be can be quite you know it's a, it's it's a hard chapter 
you have to use the rest of scripture the whole of the bible is integrated together you can't just study revelation 6 as an island you can't do that you have to look at what the rest of scripture says there's many many i i've heard that there was around about 800 references to the old testament in the book of revelation and it is the most jewish book in the new testament by far and so the way that we understand it is from a jewish perspective funnily enough we were looking at the gospel of matthew last night when jesus said beware of the leaven of the pharisees and of course the disciples are like we've, we've forgotten bread he's talking about bread we haven't got the bread and jesus is like how long is that when are you going to understand i'm not talking about bread i'm talking about leaven and he he describes to them what leaven is well that's the book of revelation the book of revelation in many ways is written in code but that code is deciphered for the faithful christian he that's why he spoke in parables so that those that were opposed to him seeing they wouldn't see hearing they wouldn't hear but the disciples the faithful would understand the parable that's what it's like in revelation so it's a tremendous book Revela uh, on sunday we'll be looking at one of my favorite chapters in the entire bible revelation 7 a glorious chapter full of joy and wonder but we're in revelation 6 and we we looked at a time that's coming in the future where both Daniel and Revelation and Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, they all bear witness to a time that's coming where the saints can only wait. And they're waiting, just like they were in the day of Pentecost. But for those 10 days, they're waiting. There's no power. They have, a, they have just enough oil to get them through. The Lord hasn't left them but the power, the restrainer has left. And I thought it'd be a good thing to finish off this session just describing the events in your life that have most fitted this time. There's no doubt in the Christian life, if we're honest with one another, there's no doubt that there are times when we don't sense the power and we know his presence by faith, by faith. Like in Job, when everything was against him, he declared, I know that my redeemer lives. And I know that in my flesh, I will see God. It was a declaration of almost blind faith. And there are times like that. And just before we get into Revelation 7, in terms of we looked at the martyrs in Revelation 6, we looked at this terrible falling away which is going to happen. We've seen in the seven churches that, 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 that we need staying power. I wonder whether you can describe to your group a time in your life where you didn't necessarily feel the power of God but you knew he was with you and he and he alone got you through that time i think it'd be wonderful if we could share with one another what we've been through and then pray for one another there's many people that need prayer at this moment in time pray for one another and so i know this is a short shorter study the first part we're looking at history second part we're going to be sharing but you know what? We overcome the devil, not just by the blood of the lamb, but also by our testimonies. Our testimonies are important. So let's finish off and talk about times in our life where there was really a sense of, where's this going to? And how did you get through it? Because our God is faithful. He is faithful. David says he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor the children begging bread. He is faithful to his people. This is a wonderful, awesome time that we're having at the moment. It's a, I believe it's a holy time. And I just pray that this week will continue along these lines and that the presence of the Lord will just get even stronger. God bless you. Hopefully see you this week. If you can't come, hopefully 
you're praying along with us. So many people to pray for, so many situations. The world's going crazy. And although we live in the UK, and I don't think we realize in the UK just how crazy the world is going outside of the UK right now. It is on, it's four notches up from where we are. But God is faithful. God is faithful. And when the, 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 the demonic winds stir up the Mediterranean Sea in, in Daniel chapter 7, there's a sea of glass in heaven. Shalom. Shalom. Godly peace is not an absence of conflict. It's been full. It's been full to overflowing with the Lord. That's the difference. Shalom, my friends. Have a wonderful Zoom meeting. Hopefully see you this week. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is who, he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Psalm 101 I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbour, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness, and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, 
and to those who remember his commandments do them to do them the lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all bless the lord you his angels who excel in strength who do his word heeding the voice of his word bless the lord all you his hosts you ministers of his who do his pleasure bless the lord all his works in all places of his dominion bless the lord O oh my soul Amen. in thee o lord do i put my trust let me never be put to confusion deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape incline thine ear unto me and save me be thou my strong habitation whereunto i may continually resort thou hast given commandment to save me for thou art my rock and my fortress deliver me O my god out of the hand of the wicked out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man for thou art my hope O lord god thou art my trust from my youth by thee have i been upholden from the womb thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels my praise shall be continually of thee i am as a wonder unto many but thou art my strong refuge let my mouth be filled with praise and with thy honor all the day cast me not off in the time of old age forsake me not when my strength faileth for mine enemies speak against me and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together saying god hath forsaken him persecute and take him for there is none to deliver him O oh God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries of my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more my mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day for i know not the numbers thereof i will go in the strength of the lord god i will make mention of thy righteousness even of thine only O god thou hast taught me from my youth and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and grey-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this congregation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? Thou, which hast showed me great and sore troubles, shall quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness, and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp. O thou Holy One of Israel, my lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. the Lord O oh my soul Lord my God 
You are every, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on, on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes wind winds his, his messengers, uh, flames of fire his servants. He sets the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You cover, cover it with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at, at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to fight, flight. They uh, flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place where assigned for them. You set a boundary there. They cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the, the beasts of the field. The wild donkey uh, quench, quench his thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He, he waters the mountains from his upper chamber. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, uh, being forth, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that uh, sustains stains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork his, has, has his home in, in the uh, Jabnak. No. The, the high mountains uh, belong to the wild goats and crags are a refuge refuge for for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows when to go down. He brings darkness to it because night becomes night and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lion roars he, for he 
pray to seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in the dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labour until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you make them all. The earth is full of your creations. Mm. There is the sea, vast and spacious, mm. teems with creations beyond number, lying down both large and small. There the ships go to the foe, and leverens uh, with which which you form to pro prolic there all all creation looks to you to give them their food at the proper time then you give them give it to them they gather it up when, when you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and is trem and trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. May, may my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord, but my uh, sins vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Wow.